Hello and welcome to the 5-Minute Sound Designer, where I'll show you a new tool, technique, or sound design concept in about 5 minutes or less. So today I want to talk to you some more about some synthesis basics. This is part 2 of our synthesis series. And in today's video, I want to talk to you about FM synthesis. And we're here in Logic Pro using a synth known as EFM1, but there are tons of other FM or frequency modulation synths in existence. FM8 by Native Instruments is probably one of the most popular, and plenty of other DAWs come with other FM synthesizers too, and they all look radically different, but follow a similar principle. So frequency modulation or FM synthesis works off of a simple principle where you have what's known as a modulator and a carrier. So on the left here we have a modulator and on the right we have a carrier. And essentially in really simple terms, the modulator and how we kind of tune it will affect the overall sound of the carrier. So this modulator essentially sends a signal to the carrier, which then modifies it and then comes out of the speakers. There's a lot more to it, and if you want to get into the science of it, I recommend you type in FM Synthesis Basics and see what tutorials pop up, because I'm sure there's a lot out there. But I like using FM synthesis for sound design because it can give you a cool sort of Sega Genesis or SNES or old PC game sort of sound or kind of an 80s cheesy synth sound in general. So you can hear that we have this kind of funk lead preset here and it sounds cheesy in a really fun way. And maybe that's the sound you want. But Honestly, you can do some really neat stuff just by playing with these knobs here. And when it comes to the basics of it, you'll generally want to start by playing around with this modulator section. So if I change this kind of wave knob on the modulator section, essentially this is changing the waveform of the modulator and how that will affect the carrier. So I'll just hold down a note and I'll play with this knob and you'll hear the difference. So you can hear the sound changes pretty dramatically. You can also tune the modulator and carrier separately from one another, and this is kind of where the cool sound design stuff starts to come in. If I take this modulator and just tune it just a little bit, this is a fine tuning knob, so it's just it's very subtle variations, and do the same for this carrier section, you'll hear that the sound changes quite a bit. And just like that, when we detune it, it doesn't sound so much like an instrument anymore, but we can use it as a bass layer for some sort of electric sci-fi sort of thing pretty quickly and easily. Now, if I play with this FM knob in the middle, this is basically determining how much this modulator section is affecting the overall carrier or kind of output sound. So if I hold down a note and play with this knob... So this turned all the way to the left is basically just the carrier sound on its own. We're not really hearing much of the modulation, kind of the effect of the synthesizer. And turned all the way up, we're hearing the effect of this modulator going to this carrier and affecting the overall output of the sound. And of course you can change the pitch of the modulator itself and the depth of the frequency modulation. And on top of that, you can do a whole bunch of other stuff in here that allows you to create some unique sounds, like these harmonic knobs. So now it doesn't even sound anywhere close to our original sound. So I use this tool a lot for emulating old sound effects, so Genesis, or SNES, PlayStation 1, that sort of stuff. Or if I want kind of a old school anime sound, I also reach for an FM synthesizer. I tend to use the Native Instruments FM8 pretty much exclusively for that, but if you don't have that and you have Logic, the EFM1 is a good starting point. 
You can do things like remake Sonic ring sounds or Mario coin pickups and all sorts of other good stuff from that 90s era sound. So if that's what you're going for, or even cool percussion stuff, this is a great place to start. So I hope this was helpful to you. If it was, of course, do all the silly YouTube things. I hate to tell you this, but... Ugh, rate, comment, subscribe, all that silliness. And also sign up for my newsletter where I send out weekly sound design and game industry career tips. So if you want to make a living in this industry, sign up for that newsletter. And also watch my TED Talk on video game music and the power behind it. Thanks so much. I'll talk to you guys next time.